make promises to eat better, get healthy, read more books or save money. I know you do because I do it too, especially around this time when it is New Year. And we have come up with this concept of New Year resolution. We say to ourselves that whatever has happened till now is okay, but this year will be different. This year I will be different. But let's be honest, it's not easy. It's not easy to keep a resolution. It is not easy to stick to that decision. But have you ever wondered why? Why do we struggle to do this? Why can't we keep that resolution alive? Today, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. I'm a neurologist. And in today's video, we will break down the neuroscience of resolution. Why is it so difficult to keep them? And what can you do to make these changes last? Let's go. When we look at a disciplined person, we often think, how can they be so consistent? And we look at the results that they achieve and that is what inspires us. We look at them and say, that is what I want. I want to be like that person. And we get a surge of motivation. That surge is what makes us create these new year resolutions. Ki is saal main roj gym jaunga. Is saal main roj padai karunga. Is saal main kuch karke dikhaunga. But then in the next few weeks, months, something happens. That adrenaline rush quietens down and people get less and less excited about it. And that is when the resolution breaks. Why does this happen? To understand this, we first need to understand why does the brain do anything? Our brain is a reactionary machine. It is constantly looking for cues in the environment, some kind of suggestion as to what to do and it reacts to it. So when we look at somebody that we admire doing something, we will react to that and say, that is what I want to do. But when we remove that cue, our brain now is looking for other suggestions, other signs as to what to do. And unfortunately, as long as our primary motivation is coming from the outside, a habit cannot form. And that brings us to the crux of today's conversation, habit forming. What does forming a habit mean? Basically, it means that you are doing an action not because someone or something is telling you to do it, but because your body is now used to doing that action by itself. A good example is waking up and brushing your teeth. Now, you may remember in the first three, four years of your life, your mom and your dad would have been telling you every day to brush your teeth. And at that time, it wasn't something natural to you. But over a period of time, your body got so used to it that now you can't even think of going out of the house without doing it. For some other people, it might be taking a morning shower or going for a run or going to the gym or meditating or reading a book. Whatever it is, once an action goes from being reactionary to a habit, it automatically becomes consistent. And that is step one in your journey towards making that resolution a reality. Make it a habit. So how does the brain form new habits? In his book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, this was described beautifully. For you to form a new habit, you first need to identify what are the cues that can remind you to do it. Also, you need to identify what are the current cues in your life that trigger actions that you don't want, which are your negative habits. For example, if you are trying to eat healthier, you might find that there is a packet of chips on the table or your Swiggy app is right there in on your main mobile screen. So imagine if it's a four o'clock on a Thursday evening, you are bored. You are looking around for some distraction. It might not be food, but because your eyes will now spot the packet of chips or your eyes will fall on the Swiggy app, suddenly the the first thing that your brain thinks of is let's find something to eat. These are subconscious triggers that trigger bad habits. If you need to get healthier, these are the things that need to go out first. But this is only half the job done. You now need to replace it with a good habit and good triggers. One trigger could be that you keep your running shoes or your exercise shoes along with your socks right outside so that as soon as you wake up, you can see it and you know that you are ready to go. And after this comes the reward. What happens when you go for that run, exercise or spend a day eating healthy? Figure out some way of rewarding yourself. It could be simply a matter of tracking your progress, putting an extra line on your tracking chart or messaging a friend. Just that feedback is dopamine rush enough for you to want to do it more. The wonderful thing about good habits is that the benefits will soon become apparent and so you will stop needing external validation after a while, but initially that does help. But there is another side to the story. What about distractions? In 
today's world with social media, streaming apps, entertainment everywhere, it is very easy to get distracted. It is hard to maintain focus and stick to your resolution. So what happens when a distraction comes up? What happens when there is a reason for you to stop? This is where willpower comes in. The ability to say no and the ability to say yes to sticking to your original decision is a hard one. But it is a skill just like any other and it can be learned. When your brain takes a decision, two centers in your brain are primarily working. One is your prefrontal cortex, that is the evolved part of the brain. This is the part of the brain responsible for taking long-term decisions, that is planning and calculating your future. The other part is the limbic system, which is the primitive old part of the brain. This part is only concerned with immediate rewards and immediate threats. What is dangerous right now? What can feel good right now? The struggle or the conflict between these two areas can be very strong sometimes. So for example, the idea of waking up early and going to the gym isn't really comfortable in that moment. It will be much more comfortable to lie in bed under the blanket, order a hot chocolate and relax. But for your long term benefit, it is better to leave the bed and go for that run, go for that exercise. This conflict has to be resolved by the prefrontal cortex getting used to saying no to the limbic. And that is what willpower is all about. Just like any other skill, the more you practice this, the better you get at it. And the beautiful thing is, after a while, even the limbic system starts getting convinced about how this is good for me because good exercise, good sleep, good diet also starts feeling good in the present also. And when you get to that stage, it becomes easier and easier to maintain your habit. We can't talk about New Year resolution without talking about a very important factor, which is the environment. You are not operating in an isolated system. Everything around you affects who you are, what you think and what you do. And the way it affects you is by regulating your stress level. The more stressful your environment is, the harder it is for you to focus on what you want to do. Also, the more stress around you, the stronger your limbic system becomes because now it is important for the limbic system to worry about its survival. Which is why if there is a lot of things happening, if your job is stressful, if there is a lot of fights going on between you and your partner, you and your friends, you will find yourself not making the right decisions more often. That is why it is very important to surround yourself with people that you get along with and to make sure that you are stress free. Improving your quality of sleep and regular meditation both have very important roles to play in reducing the stress in your mind. Do this and you will find sticking to resolutions much easier. And finally, I want to talk about the challenge of changing yourself. As we go through life, we identify ourselves as a particular person. We start believing that this is who I am, this is all I can do and I can't do any more than this. This is not true. Our brain has a tremendous capacity to change, to evolve, to become much, much more than what it is. This is called as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is basically the networks of the brain physically rearranging itself to form new networks, to see new patterns and to respond differently. This capacity is, for me, magical. And to be able to harness this power is incredible. Basically, what this means is that whatever is your past experiences, do not let them define you. Instead, learn from them, understand more about yourself, especially your own weaknesses and work towards changing those specific things. There was a study that I read recently on plane trajectories, how in a long distance travel, even one degree of change in the flight's path can lead the plane to be more than 60, 70 miles off target. It goes to show that a small difference in your behavior repeated every day would have a large impact on your life, on your goals and in your well-being. So, to sum up, here are some things that you need to do to make your resolutions work. One, rewrite your resolution into small measurable goals. Make sure that you are aiming for some things that you can do every day and two, keep track of them. Keep a journal, keep a diary or maintain a notion page where you can write down every day what is it that you've achieved and what are the challenges that you faced. Make sure that you reward yourself every time you fulfill that day's goals. Number three, build a support system around you. Change your environment to make it more conducive to focus and reducing stress. And number four, play the long game. 
do not punish yourself for missing one day do not punish yourself for feeling low on one day the idea is that we are in it for the long term just make sure that you're getting back on track you're getting back to doing what you want to do and don't hesitate reaching out for help speak to people around you reach out to professionals to see how they have done things and stick to your goals Another concept that can help us with thinking more clearly and building habits is mental models. Click here to understand what mental models are and maybe they can help you fulfill the resolutions that you set yourself this year.